Now, let me spend just a minute on why HIV is so resistant to antibody, because all other viruses, except, uh, yeah, basically almost all other viruses, are sensitive. So antibodies have to attack a virus on the outside. They have to attack these, these spikes on the outside of the virus uh, and cover them up or trigger them or get rid of them, do something that will make it impossible for the virus to bind to an infected cell. And the spike is made of two components. It's made of a head, which is called GB120. You can see that down here very well. Uh, and it has a, a spike that goes into the membrane, which you can see over here uh, very well. And uh, that spike is known as GP41. So we have GP120 on the surface, GP41 on the spike, and there are antibodies known, human antibodies, monoclonal antibodies, that will bind both to the head and to the spike and prevent infection. Problem is that those antibodies do not have a high enough affinity to provide protection to people. And furthermore, uh, you can't elicit those antibodies from the human immune system with any degree of reproducibility. They appeared once, we have captured them, but we can't do it over and over again. So the monoclonal antibodies are not the answer. But let's look at how HIV actually goes into a cell. So here is an HIV particle, and here's one spike blown up and to be very large. It actually has three balls on it, two in the front, one behind that can't be seen, and, uh, and so it's a trimer. It has this, this spike that goes into the membrane, which is GP41, which is also a trimer. In fact, there's one monomer each of 41 and 120 in complex. Uh, that, are, that were separated by a protease. This is the infected cell down here. That cell has a molecule called CD4 on its surface. Only cells that have CD4 on their surface are infected by HIV because the first thing that HIV does is interact with CD4 by a place on the, on the GP20 molecule. That interaction causes a whole wholesale change in the structure of this trimer. And what it does is to generate down here a binding site for another protein, which is called the co-receptor, CCR5. The virus, after a CD4 is bound, now develops a CCR5 binding site, binds there, the fusion actually occurs there between the membrane up here on the virus and the membrane on the cell. You can see the extent to which the CD4 molecule changes the structure of the protein. This is at rest. This is HIV at rest uh, outside of cells, and this is the structure of one of those three monomers. And you can just see there are ribbons in it. It's all you need to do is look at it impressionistically. Now CD4 binds to it. CD4 binds over here. You can see CD4 binding. And now look at the change in the structure of this protein. This helix is over here. It used to be over there. Uh, the ho there's a wholesale reorganization. The consequence of that can be seen best in this model. So here is the at rest state. This is the binding site for CCR5. It's in two pieces. It isn't actually put together. Only when CD4 binds does it come together. This is the binding site for CD4. It's in pieces. Only when CD4 is in the environment does it induce a change in structure that puts together the elements of the CD4 binding site. And then, uh, this is perhaps best seen on the previous slide, uh, there's also all of this stuff around here. And what that stuff is, you can see this is looking down on the virus. You see it all around the outside. That stuff is sugar, carbohydrate. And that prevents antibodies from binding. So the antibodies can't bind all around. The only place they could possibly bind would be the CD4 binding site or the CCR5 binding site. And neither one of those exist in the resting state. They're both in spl split into pieces. And so making an antibody that will uh, neutralize this virus 
is extremely difficult. The only hope I think that we have is not trying to make the human immune system do something it can't do, but rather to use the intelligence of modern molecular biologists and structural biologists who can look at these structures and say, well, I see a different place. <coughs> Excuse me. I see a different place where we might attack it. Or maybe we can attack it not with a standard antibody, but with some different kind of protein or some modified antibody that can get into a crevice which a standard antibody can't get into because antibodies are actually quite big on the scale of these molecules. 